thanks for stopping by at Twisted Art Designs. Today I want to show you my latest paper doll kit that's going to be listed in the Etsy shop. There will be a link in the description box below if you're interested in this kit. It is the Teacup Fairy. So there are two different fairies that you can put together and it's cute, it's super cute, easy enough that you could print it out in color onto cardstock, cut it out. You could glue the pieces together if you don't have brads. You can make the pieces movable if you do have brads. But what I'm gonna do is show you some really fun tips and tricks for decorating them and bringing them to life. So if you wanna print it out and put it together, it'll be cute to use in an art journal or for a paper doll to put a hanger on and hang on your paper doll tree, whatever you wanna do with it. But if you want to take it a step further, stay tuned. Let's go have some fun because I'm going to make these fairies super cute. To get started, I print them onto really good 120 or 140 pound uh, white cardstock. I have a description um, in the link below for the cardstock that I like to use. It makes them nice and sturdy, and when you make the parts movable, it makes them uh, stay together really well. So the first thing is to uh, pull up your printable file and then print it onto cardstock. Then, of course, you're going to fussy cut out the pieces. So let's start with the teacup. The reason I left the teacup plain is so that you can decorate your teacup any way you'd like. So you could paint that teacup uh, a solid color, you could add polka dots, stripes, you could use a gold uh, paint pen like a Posca paint pen to make gold trim around the handle, the top of the cup, around the edge so you could gold trim it. I'm going to do uh, rubber stamping. I want to do a flower pattern onto my teacup. So here's how you can accomplish Take a piece that. of plain printer paper, just plain old copy paper you would use in your printer and you place it over your cup. You can draw around your cup. So what you're going to do is just draw out that shape so just the basic part of the cup and now you're going to cut that out either with scissors or an exacto knife so what i've done is made a mask and you can put this over your teacup and now you can use any rubber stamp so if you have pattern stamps or stripes or flowers or anything you can stamp over the top of this and it'll just be in the teacup let I'm me show ranger you. archival ink in black i'm going to ink my flowers this is a, just a clear stamp image of flowers. I've got my mask over my teacup and now I'm going to stamp the flowers onto the teacup. And then when I remove the mask, now look at my teacup. It's a floral teacup. Is that cute or what? So the possibilities are endless just in your teacup alone with how you can decorate it. So be creative and see what you can come up with. I've also included tea bag tags for you to hang out of the teacup. And there's a plain one that you could write on, you could stamp on with little tiny uh, letter stamps. I've got one that says fairy flavor, tea for two, and drink tea with me. So what I'm gonna do, because um, you have to cut across the top of this teacup to add your fairy, and then I'm gonna add a tea bag before I add my fairy. Let me show you so how. I'm using a self-healing mat and an X-Acto knife, and I'm gonna cut across the front of the teacup. I haven't marked them because a lot of people who have um, purchased my kits, I've listened to them, and they don't like dots and lines and things that impede the look of it, so I didn't mark it, but you just kind of have to go right from the middle and go about three quarters of the way. You don't want to cut it all the way across. You just want to cut it large enough to be able to stick the top of the tea fairy doll into the cup. So I can use any of these tags. I could also use a regular tea bag. So my favorite tea is Earl Grey. I may use that or a constant common and use the tea bag on the string that it comes with and put that from the cup or I might use one of these little tea tags, I'm not sure yet, but for those you just want to cut them out and you can distress ink them, poke a little hole and you're going to tie a string to it. I like using just a cheap dental floss and you can even get some at the dollar store so you'll have it right in your crafting supplies and you just tie a little knot, 
thread it through the hole, and then you're going to stick the back of the string inside and tape it to the back of the cup so you'll have a tea bag hanging out of your cup. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, color this, decorate it, add the tea tag to it, and get ready to show you how to add the fairy. So here's how my little teacup turned out. I colored it and colored the flowers and made little stripes in the bottom along the edge, and I cut this edge ready to go to put the fairy inside. Now I'm going to take a gold Posca pen and I'm going to add some gold trim. So I'm going to just go around this front edge here with a gold Posca pen and make a nice gold paint edge. I like teacups with gold trim. So then I'm going to go around this bottom one and do the same thing. Add a gold edge. and see what that looks like with gold around it. So that looks really pretty. And I think I'm going to go with this uh, drink tea with me tag. So I'm going to go ahead and get the tag ready and add it to the cup and then move on to the fairy. So here's the cute teacup. Love it. Love it. So cute. And I like to take a brush pen. I mention this all the time and I go around the edges. And on these teacups, I like to just kind of bend this back a little and do that edge too, just so that it's um, nice and pretty on the inside. I took this tea bag tag and I used some distress ink around the edges. I used a paper piercer, poked a hole, used some, um, some dental floss, made a little knot, pulled it through, taped it on the back with just scotch tape, and then you can just feed it through the slot of your cup carefully so you don't rip that cup top off. So feed your little tea bag tag through. Put you put it where you want it and get it as long as you want that tag to be or the string to be. I'm going to put it off to the side here because the girl's going to go in there. And then I can just take a piece of scotch tape and tape it on the back side. So here's your tea bag tag in the teacup. Now on the little fairy that goes in the cup, what I didn't do, I didn't mark with dots because I didn't want to ruin the design, but on either side of her hand, you're going to want to take your X-Acto knife and you're going to want to cut that hand out. Let me show you what I mean. So right here where the little button is on her shirt, you're going to go around that hand and up underneath that hand. And you're going to just cut around that hand so that it can pop up like that. And that way when you stick her in the cup, her hand is going to be over the front of the cup. So here she is cut out and her little hand cut away and she can be slipped right into this cup and put her little hand over the top and look at how cute that is. She's coming out of the cup. So that's cute as is, but let's take it a step further. I'm gonna show you how to really jazz up those wings. Now you could take like a Spectrum Nor glitter ink and brush it over the wings and make them glittery. You could glue on some little bits of glitter. Um, use some different pearl paints like Arteza has some pearl acrylic paints You could water them down and brush them with some uh, pearl paints There's so many things you could do to make the wings cute, but I'm going to show you another idea So here's another fun idea if you take a piece of vellum vellum is This see-through paper like this see if you've seen vellum before get some vellum paper and You can put it over your little fairy and see how you can see it easily through the vellum. Take a pencil and trace the wings in the vellum. Just like that. And then I'm going to come in from her body and make a little tab. And then on this side do the same thing. Trace like that. So you end up with the wings drawn on vellum just like that. So next what I'm going to do is to put that that fairy back underneath and I'm going to put the vellum over the fairy wings like this. And I'm going to take a little stylus. That's just a little metal 
tool that has a ball tip on it. And I'm going to just trace over those little lines, like the veins and the wings, with my stylus. And when you push down, it should make an indent into the vellum. You can do this on a um, mouse pad, but most people, most computers don't have mouse, use a mouse anymore. So if you don't have a mouse pad, you can still use your, your mat, your self-healing mat works too. You just kind of have to push a little hard to get the lines in there. But if you just take your little stylus and go over those wings, see if you can see what you end up with is little veins in the wings. See that? So cute. Okay, now I'm going to cut those wings out. And I'm going to erase my pencil lines. So what I've ended up with are my two little wings with some veins in them. And now I'm going to take some Distress Oxide ink by Tim Holtz. This is Peacock Feather. And I'm going to take a um, Q-tip and just pick some up and go around the edges. So see how that's going to just really make those wings pop. And then I'm going to use my heat tool to gently dry them. Don't be careful not to bur burn or scorch your vellum. So I just used a pair of tweezers, held them, and then used my heat tool to just dry the edges so it won't smear. And now what I'm going to do is take my X-Acto knife again. And on this side, you're going to have to cut along her arm. So I'm going to take my X-Acto knife and I'm going to cut her arm just like that. This way I can stick this newly made wing in front of the other wing. And you're going to see the wing behind and the lines. And then she's also going to have a pair of vellum wings in front of that. So on this side, I just need to cut along the edge of her shoulder and just give enough space to stick this little wing back here. And you could even offset them a little. That would look really fun. I think I might do that by just tipping them a little bit like that. Almost gives a double layered look. So look what that did for adding an extra flare to her wings. So you don't have to do that. The wings are pretty just the way they are. I'm just showing you some ideas for making them a little bit more jazzy and fun and giving you some tips and ideas. So now I'm going to um, tape those to the back and put her into her cup and she'll be ready to go. So here's how she looks with her double layered wings. And I think I'm going to add some glitter around the edge of her cute little top. So I've got a tidy tray my um, art glitter glue with the fine tip applicator and some pretty fine glitter. And I'm going to go around the top edge of her top. Just with a really fine little row of glitter. And I'm going to leave that little dot plain because I think I'm going to use a gemstone in there. Just like that. Put her in the tidy tray, add some glitter. Because fairies have to be glammed up. Well, they don't have to be, but I like glam. So I'm glamming her up. Yes, yeah, see, look how cute that looks with glitter. Love it. Okay, now I'm going to glue a little gemstone right there, and then I think I might do some more flowers at the top. So here's what she looks like with some uh, gem in the middle of her little top there and the glitter around the edge, the wings, and then I went ahead and used some Spectrum Nord glitter ink right on the vellum wings. They made them curl a little, but they'll flatten out as they dry, and it just added some shine and shimmer to those wings. I've got these little tiny flowers, and these are for doing nail art like they use at a beauty salon, and I'm going to add those up here. I like the flowers that it has, so I'm going to kind of do it a little offset so it doesn't cover those up, but just add something to it. 
So, and I know everybody doesn't have these, but look around and see what you can find to decorate your girls. You know, be creative and add little things of interest that are three-dimensional. So look how cute that is to add some more flowers up at the top. So she's done and ready to go and be used in my tea fair or my fairy journal. So I took my little fairy and I'm doing a fairy journal and I glued her into place and I put a little chalk underneath and look how cute that dimensional fairy is in my journal. Love her. So for this fairy, she's going to have a movable head if you choose to use her that way. Um, if you don't have any little mini brads, you can always just glue her into place. But I'm going to show you how to make her head movable. So you want to cut out her body piece and then you want to cut out that piece right there. Where the dots are marked, you're going to poke a hole with your um, paper piercer. And then you're going to cut out her head. And you want to make a slit around her chin. So you just kind of want to go up around her chin like that into her hair just a little bit underneath that chin. So go ahead and cut those pieces out, make your holes, and then I'll show you how to put her together. So I've cut my pieces out and... Now I'm taking a paper piercer and where those dots are, I'm going to pierce a hole and I'm going to connect through the front using a little micro mini brad, which um, people are going to ask, where do you get those? You're going to have to look online to try to find them. I've gotten them from craft stores and they're micro mini brads. So you're going to put the put it through the neck and then put it through this tab and you're going to spread your brat out. In the back and then you're going to put glue along this edge on the end of each side of that little tab just on the end pieces. And you're going to put this, her head, over the neck. Put it where you want it to be on the neck. And then hold those little two sides until they dry, which with art glitter glue, it's pretty darn quick. They hold into place. And I also like to put a little tiny piece of scotch tape in the back. That's, to me, just a little extra safekeeping. So put a little scotch tape just like that and now her head is movable so she can you can position her head and if you don't want to have her head movable then you wouldn't even need that piece you could just glue the neck to the back of the head wherever you want it so her hair could be in the front like that, or her hair could be behind, like that, any way you want to do it. And there's her movable head, so her head moves and turns. This flower piece is made to be used in three different ways. So you can put it behind her head like this, as like a flower crown, which is just adorable. I love that. You can flip it upside down and you can put it in front right here at her waist and it adds a dimensional dress to her uh, to her dress. It adds some dimension there. That's really cute too. Hard to decide how to use it. Or you can use it at the on your page and draw a stem and add it to your page somewhere. So there's three different ways that you can use that flower piece. So if you have some creativity, these uh, these little paper dolls are so versatile. The wings for this one are uh, white, so you could paint them different colors. You could paint them to look like um, butterfly wings if you wanted to. You, I'm going to put some um, of the Spectrum Nord glitter ink on them to make them shiny. You could do the vellum trick that I showed in the last one with the last doll. So there's so many different ways that you can change them up. So if you wanted to print this out and you want to change your dress and make it pink, acrylic paint. Use it on a little paintbrush or use a Posca paint pen. Change your dress to pink. Change the flower to pink. Change it up. 
do her hair in a different color. You can go over this hair with a little bit of a brown or um, a color that looks like it would be auburn and you could make a totally different fairy just printing it out and using some creativity to make your next fairy a little bit differently. So you can use that kit once you download it. You can print it over and over again and make as many fairies as you want and have a whole array of different fairies based off of this one kit. So I have her wings cut out and now I'm going to cut out her arms and I'm going to put them all together in one shot with one brad so that the wings and the arms are positionable. You don't have to do that. You can glue them into place. So if you don't like to use brads and you just want to glue them, you just want to stick these wings where you want them. You can put them up high like this. You can do them any way you want to, to position them on her body. If you put them kind of straight out, she almost looks like a dragonfly fairy. So I think that's probably what I will do with her is make her look more dragonfly-like. But change it around and do it the way you'd like to do it and see what you can create with your fairy. Okay, so what I need to do now is I need to decide where I want these wings to be. And I'm going to stick them behind my fairy. Put them in place. And then I'm going to put the arm over it where it goes on the shoulder. I didn't put any dots because I've had people tell me that once I put dots, if you're not using brads and you're gluing them, then the dots show. So I listened and changed that up on this one. I mean, if it does have a dot, then you do all you have to do is put a little bit of paint over the top of the dot. But... If I put a little brad through all the pieces like this. Now I've got her movable arm and her positionable wings all with just one brad. So I'm going to do the same thing on this side. So on her legs, one leg is straight, one leg is bendable. And you can put them behind her. You want to glue them into place. Find how you want them to be behind her body. And you can make them as long or as short as you want. So if you move them up, she'd be a shorter fairy. If you pull them down a little bit longer, she'd be a taller fairy. And it's totally up to you how you decide. And then once you have them where you want them, just put some glue and glue them in place and add a little tape. So here are the two mushroom pieces cut out. And of course, I went around the edge with a pen so they don't have white edges. And you can make this any way you want. Make it longer, taller by gluing that up top, putting it down further onto the base, however you want it to be. And what I'm going to do is put a pop-up, a little pop dot. Instead of just gluing it, I'm going to use a little pop dot so that way the top stands up a little bit off of the base. Like that, and it makes it look dimensional. And then she's going to be standing on this mushroom like this. How cute is that? If it'll fit on my page. I gotta see if it'll fit. So to decorate her, I used some of that Spectrum Noir glitter ink on her wings to make them really glittery and sparkly. I used some little uh, nail art flowers in her hair. I flipped the flower upside down and added it to the top of her dress and then kind of bent the edges up so it's really nice and dimensional. It made her dress really cute. I love it. So you may have noticed that the little kit comes with little things like this little pixie dust jar, a heart, a wand with a star, there are some butterflies. So there's all different ways you can use those for decorating. The butterflies, if you cut those out and you fold them in half and then kind of just pinch fold it so you get a little triangular fold like that. Um, I'm going to color I think the back of it orange just so that it won't show. But you can glue them down so they can be dimensional butterflies on your page. The heart, I think I'm going to put the heart in this hand. So I'm going to have her holding this heart that says love in this hand. For the pixie dust bottle, I'm going to add some glitter to the bottle. And then I'm going to use some embroidery floss to make it a little wristlet around her wrist. So I'll go ahead and finish those little details up and come back and show you what I've done. So here's what she looks like all decorated. And I put the heart in her hand over here. 
I added a butterfly to her wings, the little stand-up butterfly. I folded this one and added that on her head. I put embroidery floss around the pixie dust bottle and around her wrist. Then I put some glitter on the pixie dust jar. So it's like a wristlet hanging from her wrist. I put a butterfly popped up on the mushroom and she's going to be glued to the mushroom standing on the mushroom. So I'm going to go ahead and put her in my journal and then I'll show you. So this is what it looks like glued into my journal. How cute is that? You got a 3D mushroom, a 3D butterfly. Her legs move. Her leg moves so I can change up the position of her leg. Her hands move. Her arms move. So I left those and didn't glue that part down so that they're still movable. And I can move that. I can change the position of her wings. They're movable. Her arm with the pixie bottle, pixie dust bottle is movable. Her head is movable. And I didn't glue those places down so I can still turn them and move them. So there she is. And I did put a little butterfly on her head too. So there she is in my journal. Hope you're enjoying this and that it gave you some ideas of how to use my teacup fairy kit and make some all different fairies using that same kit. Have fun with it. Play around. There's a link in the description box below if you're interested in purchasing, it, purchasing the kit. So thanks for stopping by and go make some art today because art soothes the heart. And as I mentioned very often, I love doing teacup type of, of fairies, teacup fairy paper dolls and things, and that um, I love Earl Grey tea. So uh, because this is the teacup fairy and her friend, um, I have put in my Amazon wish list some Earl Grey teas. So if anybody would like to treat me to a cup of Earl Grey, check out my Amazon wish list. I'm always appreciative of any donations and things that I receive. I hope you enjoyed this video.